we now discuss a AR2 process. So AR2 process has two lags. So you have t minus 1, 0.88 is the first coefficient and the second coefficient is minus 0.48. So t minus 1 and t minus 2. And then you have error term. So this is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance 1 for our case. But in general case, this is nothing but normally distributed for mean 0 and variance sigma square. And you can extend this to n lags now. y of t is c plus phi of 1 y t minus 1 then phi of 2 y t minus 2 all the way to n lags. So notice that in the first case we had y of t is equal to say phi 1 and then you had y t minus 1 and then you had some error term. And we had put the condition that this should hold for the series to be bound. Now in uh, two lags there is no such condition. In two lags we form something like character characteristic polynomial. I will talk about this later. And then we find the root of the polynomial and the roots should be greater than 1. So this we will talk later. So in this case instead of 0.88 I could have taken 1.5. Whereas in the first case you cannot take this more than 1. So you cannot take anything greater than 1 because that will uh, not make any sense. The process will go to plus infinity or minus infinity and uh, that way you cannot predict anything. So the commands here are similar as before. So w is the series. So w is nothing but a bunch of numbers y1, y2, y3, y4 and so on all the way to y100 because we are generating 100 such numbers. So this is nothing but w is a vector. yeah. And then uh, this is the command for autoregressive. You put both the variables here ar 0.88 and minus 0.48 and this is our error term. This is error. This is again drawn from 0 1 but 100 variables are being drawn. So this is 100 and this 100 should match. So this you could also write as r norm 100 comma 0 comma 1 that is normal 0 1 if you have different mean and different variance you plug in a different mean here and you plug in a different variance here so let us see this in R how to plot this and we will pay special focus to uh, partial autocorrelation function notice that there are two lags here so in the previous lecture we talked about how important the partial autocorrelation function is and two lags should mean that we should have two lags so one is positive above another is negative so these two lags should be significant and everything else should be insignificant so this is the kind of partial autocorrelation function we want to see so let us see this in R so this you copy paste from the description of the video. So let us uh, run the first two lines. So we get, so we have run the lines. So we get a plot for time series. This is a plot for time series. You see it is still 100. Then uh, let us run the autocorrelation function. So this is the plot for the autocorrelation function ACF and uh, now we should run the most important function that is PACF. Let us run PACF and you see there are two lags which are important. Everything is not significant. So this one is showing it as significant but if I increase the uh, increase the frequency then this will disappear. So let us increase the frequency and uh, see this. Let us make this 500 now. 500 here and 500 here and let us run this first. So we have run this command. Now we run the partial autocorrelation function. We have run this command. So you see that now everything is within the means there's something here popping out but again you will increase the frequency do this two or three times you will get uh, only first two terms as significant so one is first is positive so that means the first coefficient is positive and the second coefficient is negative 
and in fact it comes close uh, somewhat close to our values but not exactly 0.88 and minus 0.48 so see this is not exactly 0 0.88 and this is not exactly minus 0.48 so uh, uh, yeah that is that is pretty much it now uh, we do the layout again and now uh, we want all three graphs uh, this time series the correlation autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function on a simple uh, diagram like on the same page so we run this command here now so you run this and you get everything on the same graph so now you can see that the partial autocorrelation function is giving us uh, two values one positive one negative so if you fed in some time series and this is the partial autocorrelation function you got you can say that you know there's dependence upon first two variables and then there is no dependence then you see some dependence here but we can ignore uh, this small little uh, coming out like this on the other hand from autocorrelation function you cannot say much you can see there's a sickly it's cyclic these two are significant but then there are two more which are significant here and there are a couple more which are almost breaching the confidence line whereas here it is kind of clean this is the only one which is breaching so this partial autocorrelation function actually tells you that there are two variables on which you are regressing and that is precisely here the point there are two variables 0.88 and minus 0.48 on which you are regressing and this is the graph we expected for partial autocorrelation function and it is precisely the graph which we have gotten for the partial autocorrelation function.